Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. Today, I'm going to cover amplifiers, car stereo amplifiers. This is an enormous topic. I'm going to try and break it down. By the time you're done with this video, hopefully you'll understand amplifiers, and then at some point you'll go, oh, that's the one I need for my situation, okay? What is an amplifier? How can I break it down? The amplifier is the heart of the system. It's the engine of the system. It needs to be the best component in your entire system. If you have a weak amplifier, everything else fails, okay? The amplifier is the most important part of your entire system. Is that clear? Let me tell you something. Most people over the past 32 years that come in, they always underpower their system. I don't know why the amplifier is the most neglected part. People buy great speakers, they buy a great deck, and then they, then they wimp out on the amplifier. The amplifier is the most important part. I mean, you want a strong heart, right? So you can run a marathon. You want a strong engine. You wouldn't buy $1,000 race tires and then put a four-cylinder, 80-horsepower engine in the car. Well, that's what people do. Hopefully, by the time we're done with this video, the amplifiers will make sense to you, okay? Let's get going. This is what takes the signal from your head unit amplifies it and sends out the correct power to all the speakers to make the speakers that you purchased sound amazing. Now, on the back of most good stereos, it's going to have RCA jacks, like this one right here. A good stereo should always have three sets, okay? Front, rear, and sub. So you'll have a total of six, left and right on each one, front, rear, and sub. So. On most good systems, you're going to have a set of front speakers, a set of rear speakers, and a subwoofer in the back. If you get the right configuration of amplifiers, you're able to control everything separately through the stereo. That's the best scenario, okay? So, first off, your deck needs to have three sets of RCAs, front, rear, and sub, to be able to do that. The first thing that we're going to talk about is channels. How many channels an amplifier has? Now, the most common ones today are going to be a one channel, two channel, four channel, and five channel amplifier. Let's go over it real quick. First, this one here is a Kenwood 500, 501-1. You can always tell by the model number, usually, of how many channels it has. Uh, it's going to be the, like the last number or the first number. The model numbers give it away. For instance, with Kenwood, they're 501-1. This tells me that this is a 500 watt amplifier and it's one channel. One channel, meaning mono, is made for bass. Now, that doesn't mean that you can just hook one speaker to it. Um, the reason why they have it called a mono block and not stereo is all bass is recorded mono. There's no left and right bass ever recorded. So that's why they call these amplifiers mono blocks. Now even though it's one channel, you can stack all kinds of subwoofers in different wiring configurations. You can run one sub, two subs, three subs, four subs off of a mono block. That's a one channel amplifier. Anytime you see one channel, that is made for subwoofers. Next. The two-channel amplifier. Um, this one here is a KAC5207 Kenwood. This is a small Kenwood amplifier. It's 400 watts. It's a two-channel amp. Now, nowadays, we don't sell many two-channel amplifiers. They're for certain types of situations where somebody just needs to amplify one pair of speakers. Uh, we sell a lot of two-channel amplifiers for people who need to um, amplify like boat tower speakers. But usually um, a four channel or a bigger amplifier is used. A two channel, we sell maybe one or two of these a month. So uh, you're not going to be using a two channel much. Next we go to the four channel. This one here is a Kenwood four channel 301-4. Now again on the model number it'll always have 
a reference to how many channels this is. When you're dealing with a four channel amplifier, a four channel is made to run the four quadrants of the interior speakers. We get people coming in going in, yeah, I need this hooked to my bass. These aren't bass amplifiers. These are for the interior speakers. Four channel. One, two, three, four. Your fronts and your rears. That's a four channel. Then we get into five channel. Five channel amplifiers are complete system amplifiers. What they are is you have the four channel amplifier. So you have the four channel amp and the one channel monoblock all built into one chassis. So you get it all in one right here. Does that make sense? Five channel. So here you have the, uh, here you have the four channel, here you have the one channel, and this is a five channel. All of this in one chassis. That's the basics when it comes to channels, okay, in the amplifiers. You're going to see one, two, four, or five channels out there in the market, all right? Now I'm going to get into one of the biggest problems in the entire world when it comes to amplifiers and car stereo. Are you ready for this? This is the truth. Nobody will tell you this. It's about wattage, okay? The problem with wattage in the car stereo industry is there's no standard. There's, there's no truth. There's no standard. I mean, wattage is just out the window. I mean, these companies, they'll put stickers you know, on their on the speakers, on their amplifiers, somewhere along the line, um, they thought bigger was better. So you'll see amplifiers, you know, that are that say 1,000 watts. You'll see amps that say 2,000. I've seen some that say 5,000 watts that are 99 bucks. When it comes to amplifier wattage, it's one of the hardest things to figure out. So how do you figure it out? Let me show you an example. These guys are one of the biggest culprits of it, okay? And what I'm, I'm not talking about just Pioneer, I'm talking about every car stereo brand, okay? This is where it starts with the lies. Now, this stereo right here says that it has 50 watts times 4 built in. So this, are, this stereo right here has a 200 watt amplifier built in. No, it doesn't. It's an absolute lie, okay? The true watt that any stereo has is somewhere between 3 and 8 watts. Now, how can they lie? Well, there's no regulation when it comes to car stereo equipment. So, now, how can they lie? Well, there's no regulation to car stereo equipment. So, what happens is they just print these numbers on the box and then it's up to us, you know, at the car stereo store to explain it in the couple minutes that we have. Because a lot of people would go, oh, we got 200 watts built in. Well, let me show you an example. So, we have 200 watts built into this. Well, then why? This is a kicker 300 watt amplifier, okay? A 300 watt amp. This has 200 watts built in. How is something uh, close to this size inside this? Okay, does that make sense? This is a true 300 watt four channel amplifier. This Pioneer deck says that it has 200 watts built in. It's a bunch of crap. Now, the deck does have enough power to run four speakers inside your car to make them sound okay. All right? Remember, most people rolling around with aftermarket car stereo stuff, all their speakers are underpowered, okay? Yes, they sound great, they sound better than factory, but until you have a good amplifier from a good, from a good company, you are not experiencing what your speakers can do. So how do you buy an amplifier, huh? Well, it's tough, okay? I'm going to give you the basic rules on buying an amplifier, but before I, before I give you the rules that will help you, even if you don't buy from me, these rules apply worldwide, okay? And they also apply not only in car stereo, but they apply almost in everything in your life. So, before I get into how to buy an amplifier, I want to tell you a story. A guy comes into our store, and he bought an amplifier online. 
and he comes in and says that I have a 1600 watt amplifier, okay? So, how do I say this? This story changed everything in our store of how we do things. It's awesome that it happened, okay? So he came in to me and he said that I have 1600 watts, I need some speakers that are going to handle 1600 watts. Now, this is my fault and this changed everything in our store. Now, we make sure that we see the amplifier before we sell anybody any subwoofers. So he came to me and he said, okay, I have 1600 watts, what subwoofers do I get? Well, what did I sell him? Of course, I sold him Kicker Solo Barracks, one of the best. You know, these, he says, well, these hit? I go, yeah, they'll hit. You got 1600 watts. These will tear your head off if you want. So he got the Solo Barracks subs. Everything was good. The next day he comes back and he's so mad at me. He goes, you know, those subs sound like crap. I go, you sold me something horrible. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Let's go take a look at your car. So I went out and took a look at his car, and this is what I should have done in the first place. Now, our rule here at Outrageous Audio is I want to see the amplifier before we sell you any subwoofers, okay? So I went out to his car, and this is what he had in it right here. This is a 1600 watt amplifier, okay? Power audio. You know, it's got the little fans and stuff like right here. I've seen this amplifier before, and I knew what was going on. But remember, the customer, he goes, I got 1600 watt amp and the subwoofers that you sold me are crap. So what I did is I went out to his car without saying anything else and I took a screwdriver and I opened up the back of the amplifier. Are you ready for this? This is one of the reasons why you don't buy off-name off amps or buy online. Look at that. Nothing inside. It's got a little circuit board right here and then it's got wires going across. A stereo, the Pioneer stereo that I have right here has more power than this. Uh, so, he was upset. Are you ready for this? He went back wherever he got this amplifier. He got a full refund without even giving the amplifier back. So, he let me keep this amplifier and I've been using this as a reference. You do not want to buy amplifiers that, you have, that have weird names on it. Don't buy online where, you know, you can't bring it back. Here at Outrageous Audio, we got a seven day uh, return policy that if we sold you something in regards to amplifiers and you don't like it, bring it back. You know, we don't want anybody upset. I want you rolling around with what you want, okay? So, this is a perfect example. So, what he did is he ended up letting me keep this. We sold him a nice kicker amplifier to match the subwoofers and it pounded. So, how do you know? How do you buy an amplifier out there, okay? I'm going to give you um, some secrets on how to do it. It's real easy. And again, this works on everything from home electronics, all kinds of stuff. The first thing is brand. If you know the brand, most likely it's going to be awesome. You know, Kenwood, Kicker, DC Audio, Pioneer, Sony. These are huge brands. They're not going to sell you something that's garbage, okay? They're not going to create something that's garbage. Can you imagine where that amplifier that I just showed you, can you imagine them around a conference table, you know, wherever in Taiwan or China, going, yeah, 1600 watt amp, let's fool them all. And you know, I have seen amplifiers like that in the past, and uh, there's one named Kingford. Can you believe that? And then there's another one named Kenford. Now, the reason why they call it Kenford is because it sounds like Kenwood. And it's the same thing. People bring them in. I see them on the counter. And what we do now is I just take a screwdriver and open it up and show them there's nothing inside of it. So the first thing is the brand. The second thing is finding a store that you trust. Okay? You find a store that you trust. We have dealt with this for decades. So we're going to match you up with the proper amplifier uh, to the speakers that you've purchased. Okay? Then the old rule, you get what you pay for. The price of the amplifier pretty much gives it away, okay? You know, if you're paying 99 bucks for an amp, you know it's dead. If you're paying 300, 400, 500, 700, you know. As the price goes up, I mean, you're getting into the Nike shoes and you can go all the way to the Louis Vuitton, okay? So those are the three hints right there. You know, first is the brand, then trusting a store, and then price. I mean, you get what you pay for. 
I'll give you another basic rule when buying an amplifier. How about this? This works most of the time. You add up, like say you wanted to buy a four channel amplifier for your speakers in the interior. Whatever you spent on the speakers, spend the same amount on the amplifier. Same with subwoofers. Whatever you invested in the subwoofers, spend the same amount on the amplifier to run your subs. How's that? We see it all the time where somebody will spend, you know, $300, $400 on subs, and then they'll buy a $99 amplifier to run it. Why? I mean, you could have so much more. Okay, let me give you another example to help make sense of this amplifier thing. This is why you don't see, you know, videos on amplifiers and um, power, like I said, in the car stereo industry. Because it's all over the board, and it's very, very difficult to base anything on wattage. Usually when I hear somebody say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I got 4,000 watts, my buddy has 4,000 watts, well, usually, oh, you know, it's one of these, remember this? It's one of these amplifiers or a couple of these amplifiers. No, normally you don't have 4,000 watts. A 4,000 watt amplifier, we have 4,000 watt amps here in the store. They're about... They're, they're about two grand, um, and that's for running like 615s in the bed of a truck. So let, let's get down to it so this makes sense, okay? These three amplifiers right here will run two 12-inch woofers, okay? So here's a Kenwood, 500 watt. Here's a Quantum, 1500 watt. And a Kicker, 400 watt. Guess which one runs two 12s the best? the kicker 400 watt. Can you believe that? So that's how that's how crazy it gets when it gets to amplifiers. The kicker is um, a company based in Oklahoma. They try and go more towards the true wattage rather than the inflated 1500 watt amps. So the kicker amplifier over or the Kenwood amplifier, the Kenwood 500 just to give you a, a reference point, um, this one here normally sells between $150 and $200. This Quantum 1500 watt amplifier is $139. And then the Kicker 400 watt amp is going to be right around $250 to $300. Bucks. So isn't that crazy? You're, you're spending twice the money over here for less wattage, right? No, it's just, it's just the different companies rating all these amplifiers their own way. This is the strongest amp out of these three. Now, all three of these will run two 12-inch woofers, okay? This one will do it good. This one will do it okay. And this one will do it awesome. So I hope that makes sense. So the wattage thing is out the window. You know, when it comes to speakers, subwoofers, amps, tweeters, everything. You know, the wattage that's on the box is not going to match an amplifier, okay? Now, give me a moment. I'm going to go get something that Kicker has done that's really cool. Hang tight. Okay, um, Kicker, being the company that they are, they are hands down one of the best car audio companies, you know, in the United States. Now, what Kicker has done, which no other, no other manufacturer has done, they've tried to help you, okay? On the side of every one of their speakers and subwoofers, they have a chart, okay? The chart has yellow, green, and red, okay? Let me get up here so you can see this. I'm going to come around. So, on each of their boxes, you see this right here? On each of their boxes, they show you exactly what amplifier wattage to use in a sealed or a ported enclosure, and they show you where you want to be. You want to be in the green area. Now, that's only in kicker amplifiers. So they're trying to help you match what's, like this subwoofer right here, they're going to help you match to choose a kicker amplifier in the correct wattage so that you don't blow it. So here's a kicker 8-inch sub. I had to put my glasses on because the writing's kind of small. But on the chart, it's showing that this subwoofer in a ported or a sealed box operates perfectly at 200 watts. Now, 
the way that Kicker rates this is that's 200 watts in their amplifiers, okay? Not in any other brand. They rate it for all their stuff. I wish all the companies would do this, but Kicker, they just, they just stand out and they just always are ahead of the curve. So every single speaker and subwoofer will have this chart made by Kicker on the side of the box to help you and to help us so that we can show you in the store that we're not just pulling these you know these magical wattages you know from our hip this shows you exactly what you need in the kicker brand it's so cool oh also i wanted to tell you something a lot of people don't know this and that is did you know that you can hurt your speakers a lot easier by underpowering them than overpowering them that's why most speakers blow you know you're, you hook remember we go to the pioneer deck in reality, you know, when you buy nice door speakers that handle 80 or 100 watts and you only hook them to the stereo, you're only running 3 watts or 7 watts to your door speakers. Those speakers, when you turn them up, they need more power. They're just struggling. Okay, it's like, help me, where's the power? You're turning it up, there's nothing there. So what happens is they heat up, they melt, they blow. So it's a lot easier to blow a speaker by underpowering it. By overpowering it, you know when you're blowing it, okay? With underpowering, you don't. Let me, let me try and explain that. When you have too much power, there's going to be a point where it sounds awesome, 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 and then you keep turning it up and it starts to sound funny. That's when you're hurting the speaker, when you're overpowering it. Then you back it off. When you're underpowering it, it's very difficult to know that you're hurting the speaker. So, like I said... The way to pick an amplifier, the best way, is to find a store that you trust that carries a huge array of product that can match it for you. And the big thing too, like at our store, if you're not happy with it, you bring it back and we do something else. If you're not happy with that, you bring it back, we do something else. Joey in New Jersey, when he doesn't answer the phone for you, you're in trouble. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the RCAs, the inputs to the amplifier, so it makes sense to you. Um, here again, we have the uh, Kenwood Monoblock, okay? If you'll take a look right there, it's got one set of RCAs, okay? One set. This is what feeds the amplifier the signal to boost it for the bass. Remember, Monoblock is just a bass amplifier. So the way that would work is on your aftermarket stereo, you have your front, rear, and sub, so the subwoofer RCAs would connect right here to this amplifier to feed it to the base. Then the front and rear, there would be nothing on that and just the stereo would run your front speakers and then this amplifier right here would run the base. Now, in the dream situation, here's the Kicker 5 channel. Look at that. It's got three sets of RCAs. Front, rear, and sub. Just like the deck front, rear, and sub. All of those match up perfectly and you're able to do all, to amplify your front speakers, rear speakers, sub, and control it with this entire system. Now, if you don't have an aftermarket head unit, uh, you're going to have to add RCAs to your factory unit. You know, a lot of the factory units now, the navigation systems and all the newer cars, you want to upgrade the sound system but you can't switch out the deck, okay? Well, we have all the components that will do that. Uh, they are called line output converters. I have a full video on our website about line output converters. Uh, these line output converters are what add the RCA outputs to the back of your factory unit. So we can add all these amplifiers, okay? I hope that makes sense. Next, remote bass gain. Most bass amplifiers come with a remote bass gain. What this does is this allows you, with a knob mounted up front, to control your bass instantly. Um, it's really nice to be able to adjust your bass from different uh, songs. You know, if you're listening to a rap song compared to a rock song. When the rock song, they're usually, you know, like Van Halen or something like that, is recorded at a much lower bass level. So you need to adjust the bass up quickly and a good bass amplifier will have a remote bass gain that's mounted right up front. Um, also, if you have a huge system, you know, a couple 15s or something, you see a police officer and you just, oh, let's adjust that down real quick so you don't get a ticket. <laughs> but anyway, uh, remote bass gain is real important for quick adjustability on your bass. Um, 
most stereos have, you know, the bass adjustment inside of it, but you have to go through a menu to get to it. It's sure nice just to have this mounted and just to play with it as you're driving in regards to different genres of music and to adjust it quickly. That's the remote bass game. Okay, let's talk about wire. Why would you buy a beautiful amplifier and then use cheap wire? Hello? Same thing as with an entire system. Everything needs to match. If there's one point that is weak, that's, that can make your entire system sound like crap. So you need a good head unit. You need good RCAs feeding the signal to the amplifier. The amplifier has to have the correct wire. There's two types of wire out there. Aluminum and copper. Copper is the best. Aluminum, you lose 30% of your power. It doesn't matter. That's just the way it is. Copper is more expensive. Aluminum is cheap. We have both. Go with copper. I mean, if you're going to do this, it's not that much more expensive. If you're going to do this, make sure that you ask for oxygen-free copper wire. Period. When I was in Las Vegas, Kicker had the most amazing demonstration showing you the differences between wire. Take a look at this. What we have is a demonstration of the difference between copper clad aluminum and oxygen free copper. 12 foot of copper clad aluminum wire, 12 feet of kicker wire. Here we have the battery voltage. Here we have the voltage at the amplifier after running through 12 feet of wire. And here we have the actual RMS power coming out of the amplifier. So first of all, I'm going to hook up the kicker wire using a kicker KX401. You'll see the voltage drops at the battery. After running through 12 feet of wire, we lose about 0.3 volts. But we're still getting 500 watts RMS from the 400 watt amplifier. I'm going to shut that off. I'm going to rewire this system using copper clad aluminum. Everything else is the same. Battery voltage drops just like it did before. But look at the amplifier. At the amplifier, the voltage now is down 1.5 volts. Well, nobody cares about 1.5 volts, but your amplifier does because you just lost 100 watts. So because you use the cheap wire, you lose 100 watts from your amplifier. And that's why you should buy real oxygen-free copper kicker wire. I wanted to talk about uh, the five-channel amplifiers real quick again. Uh, Five-channel amplifier, remember, that's a full system amp. It's going to run all four speakers in the front and give you a one-channel line for your bass. Now, um, when you're running a five-channel, great amplifier, full system amplifier. If you want to take your system to the next level, rather than a five-channel, it is always better to go a four-channel and a bass amplifier separately. What that allows you to do is if you want more power on the bass section, then you can just take the, this amplifier, the bass one, out and get a bigger one. You still have your four channel running the front. So, we sell a lot of five channels. This is the most popular amplifier out there. But for the guy who wants the best of the best, that's when you break it up. You do a four channel amplifier and then a bass amplifier. You do them separate. And then, if you're one of those rare people who's just an audiophile and just loves music, then you really break it up. You do an amplifier for your fronts, an amplifier for your rears, an amplifier for your subs. Break it up into three amplifiers. If you want the ultimate, that's how you do it. Okay, before I wrap this up, I want to do a little recap. I know this is a lot of information, and it's kind of all over the board, but that's the way it is when it comes to, you know, amplifiers and wattage. So remember, the wattage thing, just throw that out the window, okay? Just stick to brands you know. Uh, find a store that you can trust so that they can match your speakers and subs to the correct power. Um, remember, don't buy amplifiers that are those off-brand weird brands that you never heard of. Find a store that you trust. Find a store. Make sure you ask them this question. If I'm not happy with the power, can I bring it back? If they say no, run for the hills. You know, you come into our store, If you, you've got seven days to listen to it. If you're not happy, come on back. Let's switch it out. We'll do something different. That's what you want when it comes to this type. When you're buying this type of power, you've got to have it matched correctly. 
I wanted to talk about gray market goods real quick. Uh, what gray market goods are, are like Kenwood, if you see a Kenwood amplifier Exelon like this online for sale, did you understand that that's illegal? Not illegal as in a crime regards to, you know, somebody's going to get arrested. It's illegal in the electronics world for Kenwood. So Kenwood does not allow these to be sold online. Why? Because they want us to install them correctly. Sure, you can save 10 bucks online, but guess what happens? All of these products are tracked by serial number, okay? All the Kenwood Exelon, if installed by an authorized dealer or sold by an authorized dealer, has a two-year exchange warranty on it, if sold by an authorized dealer. If not, say you buy something online, sure, you save 10 bucks, how's that? Great. Now, something happens to it eight months down the road. Well, you think it has a warranty. No matter what the website says, you know, they'll, they'll lie. They just say it has a warranty, it has a warranty. It's not backed up by Kenwood. It's not backed up by Kicker. How do they know? It's tracked by serial number. You send the Kenwood amplifier in. First, that's a nightmare. You're paying for shipping back and forth, okay, to some random company. Say you send it in to Kenwood. Guess what they do? They type in and see that the serial number does not match an authorized dealer. And guess what? You get the blown amp back, not fixed. That's on you. You don't want to be in that situation. That's why it's very important to buy from an authorized dealer. Because when we're an authorized, we're authorized on everything we sell. And these companies stand behind us. And they stand behind you. When we install this and we're authorized to install it, you have the entire corporations behind you if something ever goes wrong. We see it all the time. People bring in amplifiers and stuff that they purchased online. We put it in. Yeah, it works great. And then three months later, they come into our store and they go, well, yeah, it's not working. We pull it back and something has gone wrong. And we come up and tell them and say, well, you know, the amplifier is no longer working. They look at us. This is a bad situation for all of us. And they say, well, what do I do? Well, I don't know. You need to find out, find the place that you bought it from. And, of course, they're not going to do anything. Kenwood or Kicker is not going to do anything. Or any other brand is not going to do anything. Because it's all tracked by serial number. And you didn't buy it from an authorized dealer. So, you're stuck. You think you got a good deal? Well, suddenly, the good deal now turns into a nightmare. Just come in. The prices that we have are so inexpensive, okay? Just come on in. Let's talk about motorcycle and marine amplifiers. Now, motorcycle, it's not just motorcycle. Um, it's power sports. The little amplifiers that we have for motorcycle can be put on snowmobiles. They can put on side-by-sides, whatever you want. Um, marine amplifiers and motorcycle amplifiers are all have extra coatings on the circuit boards so they can handle moisture. Now they can't get wet. You submerge any amplifier, it's done. But for outdoors, you know, you have your boat out outside, parked outside. You know how sometimes it gets the mildew? That'll kill a normal amplifier. So therefore you want a marine amplifier or a power sports amplifier. And they coat the circuit boards so that it can handle some moisture. That's the difference. We have tons of those amplifiers. So if you want marine or an outdoor application, we got them. Also, we have the largest selection of amplifiers on the West Coast. I have more amplifiers to choose from. Uh, you want an enormous amount of choice. Why? From size to power to brand we have the largest selection. I'm gonna grab the camera here and just walk down our amplifier wall. People walk into our store and go, whoa, I've never seen so many amplifiers. It can be a little overwhelming, but we'll take your hand and show you a few different options for what you need, okay? I'm gonna grab the camera and show you. Entire wall full of amplifiers. All different sizes, all different makes, models, all the different channel configurations. I mean, you're going to see DC Audio, RE Audio, Alpine, all the different ones of Kicker, Kenwood, Focal, JBL, Infinity, Bluetooth amps. This is where I was filming today. <laughs> 
In the glass cases in the back, we have all the marine and motorcycle amplifiers. And then on this wall, all the big marine amplifiers. Another type of amplifier that is just sweeping the nation for different applications, Bluetooth amplifiers. Isn't that cool? The, an the uh, amplifier has an antenna right on it, so you don't even need a head unit. You don't need a stereo up front. So this is a dream come true for like classic cars, for boats. Why do you need a deck? So all you do is you put this amplifier in, like in the trunk or underneath the seat, run all your speakers to it, and then just sync it up with your phone, and your phone is the stereo. You don't have to cut the dash on classic cars. Uh, we're using a lot of these, some of the high-end older BMWs, where the deck is integrated to the dash, and that has failed. So we can put one of these amplifiers in it, bypass the factory deck, and you got sound again. There are so many cool options with the Bluetooth amplifier. So remember, Bluetooth amplifier, you don't need a stereo anymore. So there you have it. I know it's a lot of information, and it's real difficult to tackle amplifiers. There's so many different options, so many different brands. I hope that this video makes sense and helps you understand amplifiers. Just remember, the amplifier is the engine. That is, your, that is the heart of your system. It needs to be the best of the best. The best you can afford. Um, come on down. We will show you different options for your needs, and then you decide. Also, if you want it put in today, we can do it. I sure appreciate you guys, and I hope this video helps somebody.